Right, are we live? <clears throat> okay. Um. Hey guys, I'm Matt, Matt and this is uh, going to be my Blade 2 segmented run, um, which I made about a year and a half ago. Um, this game was made to tie in with the movie release. Um, the game didn't wasn't very well received at all. Um, and it actually ended up getting the company that made it shut down. Um, um, but it's a childhood game for me. Um, so I'll start to play the run. Uh, I'll let you know when the timer starts. Uh, so yeah, let, let's get it started. Pursue the va so the timer will start when I skip the first cutscene. So I'll, I'll say go uh, when the timer starts. And go. So right away, you're going to be seeing me clip through this wall. Uh, so the collision in this game is very weird. Um, and in some cases, if you can get yourself stuck in between a tight corner and you punch, um, it will push you through the wall. Um, and this game, when you're out of bounds, is set to uh, lock you on the floor where the level is. So if you jump... This is why when I'm out of bounds, you'll be seeing me jumping constantly. Because when I'm jumping, if the train changes, um, I'll actually keep moving. Whereas if I just walk, I'll just stand still and I, I'll get stuck. Uh, so yeah, that's the first level. Really quick. Done. Um, and next up is actually, it, usually it would be a pretty long level. Uh, called Horror Stories. And uh, I'm going to be pretty much skipping the entire thing. You're meant to destroy these uh, communication boxes underground uh, there's like three of them uh, in the top left you can see the counter um, and that unlocks the elevator but all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna side jump into this plant pot and it's gonna push me through the wall and that allows me to just get in the elevator and uh, that's the second level done Uh, and next up is, is the Blood Club. Uh, if any of you has played this game, this level is pretty uh, uh, pretty cool because you, there's a massive d uh, dance floor and there's tons of enemies on it. Um, but Blade cares not for enemies. So I should explain uh, one of the main glitches in this run, um, which, which we're going to be using in this level. Uh, so... If you side jump, the game checks the floor that you're that you're about to land on. And if you manage to side jump um, before you land on stairs or any any lower any lower floor, um, and you side jump onto a higher platform than that floor, you'll just clip through that floor, uh, which you'll see me do here. So this is the dance floor. Okay, uh, There's tons of enemies. We used to have to kill them all. Um, but now we don't. So we're just going to basically cut these stairs. And I'm going to side jump and the game's going to think I'm going to land on the stairs. But I land there and I clip through. There's a lot of instances where you can do that trick. And I'm going to be using it a few times throughout the run. Uh, I should point out that this segmented run is not amazing. Um, there is quite a few mistakes in it. I made this run to showcase what this game had to offer because this game is very hard. An RTA speedrun for this game, or a good one at least, is, is, is very hard because if you fail a level, you have to redo the whole level. And there's levels that take up to 10 minutes each. And if you fail it, you have to do all that 10 minutes again. Annihilate the computer systems. Um, and it's very easy to die. Um, and this is the first level where we'll see kind of how tricky this game is. Uh, this one has no skips um, because we basically have to destroy 17 uh, computers um, to uh, to escape. Uh, and this is a recurring theme in this game where you have to do a certain set of objectives to unlock the exit. Um, but most of the time, the trigger or whatever for the end of the level is not there until you've completed those set objectives. Um, so yeah, just, uh, destroying the computers. We need to, you know, 
try to avoid taking as much damage as possible. Um, in this game, you have uh, med packs, which you can pick up, um, but there isn't any in this level. Um, so we need to, like, if you can see on the bottom left, you can see my UI. Uh, the green bar is my health bar. So as you can see now, I've actually took quite a lot of damage. Uh, and now it's flashing. But obviously, spoilers, we, we don't die. Um, your game will, your health will slowly regenerate. If you can see the tiny blue bar underneath the green bar, that's like Blade's serum. Um, and that bar will slowly deplete. And as that bar depletes, your health will slowly regenerate. Um, also, I should point out that this is New Game Plus. Okay. Um, so I have the UV grenades. Um, I'm not sure if I've used the UV grenades yet, but we should see them in the next level. So now I've uh, destroyed all the computers. I can go back to the, the elevator that I came in, and that's the problem. The elevator that you exit in is the exact same one you arrived in, so the trigger isn't there until you've destroyed all the computers. Yeah, so that's usually a pretty hard level. And now this is the cover-up. Uh, this level is usually pretty long, um, but when I first started speedrunning, this is one of the first games that I ever tried to glitch, and this was the first skip that I ever found. Also, if you use a UV grenade and kick, and then jump, you can move during the animation. And right there, since the UV grenade exploded as I was falling, it killed everyone in the room. There's people on the top floor and people on the bottom floor, and it managed to kill both of them because I was like half and half. Um, so yeah, this was the first time I found the, the side jumping glitch to clip out of bounds. Um, and it's probably one of the first glitches I've ever found for a speedrun in a game. Uh, this was like two and a half years ago now. Uh, so it's up here. So I'm going to be doing the side jump again. To make the game think I'm going to be landing on the stairs, but I'm not. I land inside that uh, railing, uh, and then we just jump into the uh, final area. Usually what you're meant to do is there's three um, pods, you, should, you could say, that you have to destroy them. Um, and that unlocks the door to get into this area. But uh, we don't need to do that. We could just uh, jump right in. And now we have Acid Rain. Um, this is probably one of the more harder levels levels of the game if you're playing it casually. Um, there's no skips in it, and that's the thing. is It requires you to do certain objectives. You can't end this level until you have the canister in your hand. And that's the problem. Um, now this level, I remember when I recorded this segment, it wasn't very good. Um... And the, the reason why it's hard to get some of these levels really good is because you have to rely on a few factors. So with this level, uh, I need to get Blade's Rage Ability, um, which, is the, which is the red bar. I need that red bar to fill up because the end ability, there's three stages to the Rage. And the final stage gives you super speed. Um, and I want to use that once I have the canister in my hand. So right here, I'm going to punch these people. Because that builds my rage meter. And I need to get enough rage meter. Um, also, you need to kill them for this door to open. So as you can see, my red bar is filling up. That red bar fills up when I take damage. So I will be attempting to take as much damage as possible without dying. And that's the thing, is you need to take... enough damage um, but not enough that you die um, and I'll be using the rage ability to, to move with the canister because when you run with the canister you're really slow um, and there's one frustrating nitpick I have with this game and that's the enemies and this is why you see me jumping a lot because if you get close to an enemy, you can't move at all. So when you're carrying this canister, you can't move. 
because you can't jump. So, if I'm carrying the canister and I get near an enemy, uh, I won't be able to move. Uh, and you'll see that happen. Um, but like I said, I only recorded this segmented run just to show what the run had to offer if it was done RTA. It's not meant to be like a super spectacular, frame perfect segmented run. Um, so basically what we, what we have to do in this level is we have to go and turn off the power to unlock the door to the helipad. Um, and then when we get to the helipad, Whistler will have uh, dropped up, dropped off the canister of, uh, of gas that we're going to use to wipe out this entire building. So here's a med pack. That's what the health pack looks like. Um, and it restores your health to full. So yeah, so now I've uh, my first rage ability, which is called Sword. Um, activating this at this stage would just give me the sword, nothing else. The second the second stage to the rage ability gives me um, it's called it's called strength, I think, and it makes me invincible. And then the final stage is what gives me the super speed. Their shield. I thought it was called. Str oh no! Yeah, that one's called shield. That makes me invincible. The final stage is called uh, 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 strength. Yeah, so we needed to unlock this door here. I've tried to clip past this door, but uh, I can't find a way. I think even if you could clip past it, you still wouldn't be able to get back through it with the canister. So it's just you, you lose out in every in, in every sense. So yeah. Now we're going to go get the canister from the helicopter. I sh this pistol ammo here, which I pick up, and a uh, health pack. Now, picking up items in this game is tied to the right stick. You use the right stick to use combat. Uh, there, so I unlocked the shield. Oh, no, I already had the shield. What am I talking about? So I use... Oh, I don't use the UV grenade here. Okay. Um, so right here, there's going to be a guy with a gun, and I need him to shoot me enough. So I kill the other two guys, and I just let him shoot me uh, until I get the strength. There we go, strength. And now I and now I move on. It needs to be a no, not enough damage to where I die. Um, so that's why obviously I needed the health pack. So right here, I think I get trolled, uh, and this is what I'm talking about. With when you're carrying the canister, you can't do anything at all. At all, you just can't move. And to be fair, I was sick and tired of doing this level. I, I just was contempt with this, to be honest. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, so there's like there's a big room here full of enemies, and I'm gonna use a UV grenade to get rid of them. Uh, and I wait to get to a certain point before I use the rage, because I need that speed to get through. So here I'm gonna use the rage. So now I'm using the rage ability and now I can run extremely fast and I use this to get past all these enemies. There's a lot of enemies in this room and I need to be able to maneuver past them quickly. And if I didn't have rage, they would catch up with me enough to where I'd get stuck. Now I need to hug these walls. I hug the walls because the enemies can't path there, so they can't get me when I'm hugging the wall. And uh, there, that's the level. That's probably one of the first harder levels of the game. Because there's uh, so much you have to do and you have to... Uh, concentrate on your health. Uh, so that was the first chapter of the game. Now we're on the second chapter. And this is uh, Delancey Street Subway. This level used to be really hard because you've got these trains and you have to avoid the trains hitting you. Um, but Blade cares not for trains and I'm just going to go out of bounds and go straight to the end trigger of the level. So right here I use the punching again. I get myself stuck in a tight corner and I punch uh, through the wall. And now, all I'm going to be doing is jumping in a straight line for two minutes. Enjoy. Occasionally, if you look on the right-hand side of the screen, you'll see the train tracks, where the trains would be. This, uh, this level was hard. It was hard. Until I found this. 
but it kind of just made it, you know, jumping in blackness for two minutes. To be fair, I might as well have said it was an RTA run and just played this video because it looks like one. It's that bad. Uh, those are tunnels. Um, you don't need to worry about them. You just go for them. So we're nearly there now. Don't worry. Okay, so here's the end area and we're just going to jump. Uh, back in bounds. We are, if we jump too early, we actually get stuck and we don't hit the trigger. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. then we just jump in and uh, hit the trigger. And that's the end of the level. That level used to take about five minutes. Escort whistle. Now, here is, uh, is, 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 is the cream of the crop of this game. The fucking escort missions. This game has so many. Cities. And they're hard. This is the first one. So now we have to escort this m motherfucker to plant explosives. It's great. What more can you ask for? So, this level won't look fast at all. It's just going to be me killing enemies so they don't hurt him. Um, and then him planting the bombs. That that That's it. Right here, I'm going to use this as, to my advantage to pick up some ammo while I'm waiting for him to uh, plant the bomb. Uh, and now I'm going to continue moving on to... Uh, Oh yeah, the zombies. You have to get them out of the way because they have these uh, this this gas that uh, does damage, and uh, you want to get Explosive rid of them so the gas is gone before you get there. So this is the first level that introduces the Reapers, which is that that guy there with no top on, um, and. They can, the Reapers can only be killed by UV grenades. So, having UV grenades for this level is really important. So, this level is mostly just going to be me taking the time that I have while he's planting bombs to pick up ammo. Because I'm going to need to shoot a lot of people during this run. Casual me just messing around while I'm waiting. I think I actually, I think I actually jumped down the hole by accident when I was messing around. Do I? I think I do. Yeah. <laughs> so now I have to go back up quickly. I think I actually lost time because of this because he got he, he was ready to go and I was down there. Um, also, if you're wondering, this game uh, is set. The story is set about six months after the events of the Blade 2 movie. So it's set in between Blade 2 and Blade Trinity. Uh, where where uh, the vampires are trying to make a more powerful enemy than the Reapers called uh, Project Vorpal. Uh, which we'll uh, see later on. So also, there's uh, enemies in this game that you can't actually kill with UV grenades because they're humans. Which is that guy there. They have body armor and they just shoot you a lot. Uh, they're not. Even though when you kill them, they actually make the noise as if there's a, if as if they're a vampire, but they're not. They're just a human. And as usual, I'm just using my time to get ammo. I think I just shot Whistler there, trying, I just shot him again, 10 out of 10. <laughs> look, look at me slowly backing up to pick up the health pack. It doesn't matter, because I, I have to wait for him anyway, but it's still funny. Have I, have I planted three explosives yet? I don't even know. To be fair... Um, in my defense, um, I was meant to wake up and watch through this run again before I did it. 
Uh, but I fell back to sleep and woke up like 20 minutes before my run. So, I didn't have time to watch it. So, most of this is going to be just me being shit talking. I apologize. I haven't watched this run in over a year. So, um, yeah. I love how the music's just gone quiet now. I think that, yeah, this is the last explosive here. And then, and then basically, after we've planted the last one, we have to go all the way back to the start. And this is the thing. is with the, there's, there's, there's one escort mission in this game that you can skip, and I'll talk about it when I get to it. But with this mission, the exit for the level is exactly where you started. So the exit doesn't trigger until you finished the explosives. Oh no, no, it doesn't trigger until Whistler gets to you. So the exit for the level doesn't start until Whistler is with you. Explosive device pl I was, but I couldn't do. <laughs> I, I wanted to re-record one of the levels later on in the game, which is really hard, and Acid Rain, which you already saw, uh, but I just, I couldn't catch a break, so I gave up. It wasn't for the lack of trying, I tried to record them, but I, I couldn't do it. So, you can just get a funny laugh out of my demise of this segment's being bad. So now we're going back, just uh, picking a moment. If I remember correctly, there's a lot of enemies uh, on the way back. Quite a lot, actually. If you would like to see uh, a shit show, though, tomorrow I'll be running on try 2. Um, I'll actually be running that. I won't just be playing a video. Uh, so if you want to see a terrible run, you should watch that. So the, I should actually mention the way the combat works in this game. Uh, so this was a, a, one of the first games, I think, that decided to use a 360 combat system. So the combat is tied to the right analog stick. And um, you push the right analog stick to punch. And you can like push it backwards to kick behind you. Push it left to uh, punch to the left of you and stuff like that. Um, I should also point out that the version I'm playing on right now is PAL, PS2. There is two skips in the run which are not possible on the NTSC version of this game. So to run the whole game, you have to play on PAL. Um, and I have tried the Xbox version because this game is on Xbox. And hardly any of the skips work on the Xbox version, so the PS2 PAL version is the way to go for this game. Um, also, at some point I will be trying to do RTA runs. Um, new game, RTA runs. This game is extremely hard to do RTA. Extremely hard. Okay, so now we've got the Big Bang. Um, so... This is, we're basically getting planted the explosives now, and now we have to escape. Um, so we're basically, we're still in the same level. I've tried skipping into the other level, but you, you can't, it's not possible. It doesn't load anything. Which, to be fair, I don't, I don't blame the game. This game isn't made like that. I love, I love it when there's no music playing on the game. It's really quiet. 
So yeah, we can just ignore all these enemies now because we don't have to wait for Whistler. The only reason we were killing them all in, in the in the last mission is because we had to uh, escort Whistler, and if we don't kill them, he'll die. But the thing is, with this with Whistler's escort mission, he he does everything by himself, um, and we don't have to escort him at all. He basically escort escorts us, and we have to protect him. Um, but later on, there is a chick called Dr. Grant, who we have to escort. She follows us, and that's where the game becomes shit. And one of the levels that I was talking about that I wanted to re-record is called the Bloodsucker. And it's a level where you have to escort her, and it's extremely hard because she can get stuck. She won't follow you. She'll die, you'll die, you'll get to the end, and she's all the way at the start of the level, so you didn't move an inch. Alright, so now we've planted the explosive. Well, we've activated the explosives. And as you can see, we've got a timer of how long we have to get uh, to the end. But like I said, one of the escort missions you can skip. Uh, and I'll talk about that when I get to it. Because it was a very exciting moment when I found out you could uh, skip that. Also, if you're wondering what these orange things are, they're glyphs. Um, basically, in this game, you unlock weapons and stuff by collecting points. And each time you pick up a glyph, it gives you, you know, 50 points, 100 points, whatever. Uh, and you get 10 points for killing vampires as well. So that's how you uh, collect uh, points to uh, unlock stuff. But this is New Game Plus. This area is you. So we already have everything. Uh, now we've got Quarantine. Uh, this level is basically, you're running around in a tunnel. You have to know where to go, uh, and you're basically in a tunnel, and there's this big giant rat dinosaur monster, I don't know what to call it, it's, it's literally chasing you the whole time you're in these tunnels. If you stand still for a few seconds and turn around, you'll see it right behind you chasing you. So the first premise of this area is you just follow where the rats go. But most of it's just memorization of uh, where to go. So now you can see how this uh, that zombie gas stuff actually uh, damages you, and uh, it slows you down a bit as well. Also, if you're wondering, jumping and walking is the exact same speed. The, uh, there's, there's pros and cons to jumping. The pros are that when enemies are hitting you or they get near you, it doesn't matter. You can just keep jumping. You won't stop. Um, but the cons to, to, to jumping is that... Uh, the cons to jumping is that when you're jumping, you can't turn. So you have to stop and then turn your direction to turn again. So if you just hold the jump button, you'll just keep jumping in the same direction. Also, that monster is right behind us right now. You can hear it screaming, and you'll see it die here. It was there. Did you see it in the fence? It was right there. You, you didn't. There was a monster there. Trust me. The Byron Vampire. Now we've got the blood donors. Uh, this level used to be quite difficult. Um. Um. But then I found a way to uh, skip it. We can't skip it straight away though, unfortunately. So yeah, we just shoot that switch. You meant to, you meant to walk up to that switch and turn it, but you can just shoot it, and it, when it breaks, it activates. We we'll do the same thing with that one. Uh, you'll be seeing me shooting these doors open as well because it's uh, usually to open the doors in this game you have to kick them, but if you just shoot at it, it'll uh, it'll open. So right up here is a chair, and I'm going to jump. Be this is the this is the glitch that can only be done on PAL. So I need to get behind this chair, and then I can walk out of bounds. You can get your hitbox slightly inside the chair, and that pushes you through the wall. But this only works on PAL. 
And then we, we line ourselves up with a certain spot on the wall so I know exactly where to jump to get to the uh, place that I want to get to. We need it there now. There we are. So now you can only jump back in bounds in these cells for some reason. It's weird. And now uh, we're basically in the in the final area. Uh, so we just skipped going through a lot of enemies and uh, stuff like that. We just hit the switch here and. Uh, and we just destroy this, and that's the end of the level. <laughs> now we've got Jaws of Doom. Jaws of Doom is a, a pretty hard level. Make your way um, back. And you'll see why. There's a lot of enemies shooting at you. Um, and you want to survive. It's the main thing. This is why this game is hard. Because if you want to go fast, you, you have to risk taking damage and um, like look how much damage I'm taking from those shots you can only really do well or at least do it efficiently by killing people but that's not fast <laughs> so this game will never be a consistent speed run just because of how uh, RNG it is Most of the time, I do try to kill the uh, the enemies with the guns, just to get them out of my way. Use another UV grenade here to uh, clear this uh, doorway. Because it's very difficult to get through that doorway if the enemies are still alive. Now, if we if we line ourselves up there, from the, to the right hand side and jump, we can actually get through the door before the enemies pile it up. Now look at my health. Right now. Alright. So now we're going to open the Jaws of Doom. Uh, which is just a door with that's massive teeth. And uh, we can get through it. I have tried skipping past this door, it doesn't work, nothing's loaded. Help me. Um, you have to actually use the switch for it to load. So right here we need to kill all the enemies in this room. Um, and that's also that chick that we just saw is Dr. Grant. Just activate blade for the lols. I call it blade because he says blade when you activate it. Okay, so that's that level done. And now we've got the escape. One of the hardest levels in the game is the escape. The but I found a way to skip it. Now, this level is an escort mission. And that's why it's uh, difficult. And this Not level, asylum. this Not level, asylum. if you weren't doing skip, would take about 10 minutes to do. But you can finish it. In like two minutes so right here we have to wait for her to unlock the door the? Um, so we have to kill the, the, the vampires or she won't open the door I need to save as much ammo as possible because I need to shoot some switches later on in the level how's that luck okay so now she's unlocked the door we need to kill these enemies because we need to leave her and we don't want to leave her when there's enemies around because if we leave her and she dies, the level's over. So I kill all the enemies in this room so she won't get killed. So this was this was a skip that I found by accident. I was trying to mess around here to see if I could get out of bounds. And I jumped in this corner and I managed to go through the wall. And I still have no idea how no idea why this works. If you jump there, you just go through the wall. And now we're going to line ourselves up in, in, in a specific way so we can get to the final area. Help it's really play. hard to do this because you can't see anything. And the, the, the collision is very broken. So now, as you can see, she's getting punched right now. 
We need to destroy these switches. Um, that oh, switch. And then get to this door yeah. before she dies. And that's it. Level done. That level is really long. And very hard. But we skipped it all. Um, don't actually have to escort her anywhere. And now we've got Project Vorpal. One of, if not the hardest level in this entire game. This is a boss fight. And the only boss fight in the run. And it's stupid as fuck. So I'll explain this boss fight. Because this, this boss fight took me about four hours just to finish. To record for this segment in run. It's that hard. Um, and I could talk about the issues of how you could fix this boss fight. Uh, but at first we just have to destroy these gas pipes. And there you go. There's his health bar. So the boss is Vorpal. And he's the guy that's there falling down. And he'll come down. And you have to hit him. And then he'll go back up. Now my main issue with this fight is not him. You've got fire uh, things on the floor there. Which you have to um, which you have to avoid. If you walk over them you get set on fire. And then you've got the vampires. My issue with this boss fight is the vampires. If these vampires weren't here punching you every two seconds, this boss fight wouldn't be that hard. And if you kill them all, they'll just keep respawning. So you're best off just to leave them alone. And that's what I mean. This boss's hitbox is retarded. You can be right in front of him. Swing does nothing. Like, with this boss right now, I'm getting kind of lucky that uh, I haven't taken that much damage as, uh, as I would usually take. See, like, right there, I went to, I went to hit him with the sword, and I stabbed the vampire. 10 out of 10. Also, nice collision. Oh no, that's not Vorpal. I just realised. Vorpal is inside that uh, chamber in the middle of the room. That's like its guardian, I guess. It's like a big reaper bloke. I can taste the salt as well. 100% can taste the salt right now. This game makes me salty. If you know me, I'm a huge fan of Blade. Uh, Blade is one of my, my favourite things of all time. I love Blade. But this game is shit. I've got a lot of childhood memories with this game though. To be fair, the first Blade game on the PS1 is a lot harder than this one. The problem with this one is... It can be done right, but you're relying on a lot of elements to go in your favour. And that's why doing RTA runs is extremely hard. So right there, he's basically got no health left, but apparently I have to, I have to hit him again because 10 out of 10. I missed him. There we go. That's the boss fight done. So that was the second chapter of the game. The first chapter of the game, I finished it in like 10, 15 minutes, but this level, this chapter took like half an hour. So now we're on the final chapter. The Arkham. And uh, this one's called Into the Mountain. This one, this level has one of the more RNG skips of the run. Uh, we have to use a rock to push Can us out of bounds, and it's completely random. Completely random. Uh, also, this level introduced us to the the enemies that blow themselves up. So they have like bombs on them and they stand in front of you and explode. Um, and they're very annoying. At least they kill themselves though. So if you can get them to go to trigger their explosion and you go away, they won't hit you. So right here, I need to clear, clear this room. And I need to break this rock. I need to break that rock right there. And now I'm going to jump into this corner. 
and hopefully get pushed out of bounds. I say hopefully, I know I'm going to. It's a segmented run. What am I talking about? But that's... It's random. It, it's hard to get it first try. And then we have to just basically make a setup. Um, so we can get to the uh, end of the level. Yeah, it, uh, Mick Mick. It is a really hard boss fight to do in a run. Really hard. So right here we just got to the final area of the level. Uh, well, uh, Blade 2 is on the PlayStation 2 and Xbox, and the original Blade game is only on the PlayStation 1. Um, uh, and the, the, the PS1 version of the first game, I say the PS1 version of the first game, the PS1 game uh, is extremely hard. It's harder than this. So this is uh, Energy Stores. And this is going to be a level where I first abuse a trick that allows me to get a bounce. If I if I slowly walk backwards on a ledge, my hitbox clips into it and I can just fall out of bounds. Um, this level um, is long and it's still long even with the skip. All this skip does is allow us to skip um, turning on a switch and uh, just going through a bunch of areas with vampires. Um, we still have to do what most of the level wants us to do because you need to destroy these chambers with gas canisters again because uh, this game has a recurring theme of liking to use gas canisters to destroy things um, and we're going to be using uh, more gas canisters so we're just, go we're just basically going right into the, the big area with the power uh, with this with the skip So, a lot of setup, because when you're out of bounds in this game, you can't see where you're going. So, I use a lot of the buildings to line myself up, uh, so I know where I'm going. And here we are. So, this is the big room now with the with the power. Uh, I'm going to go in here to uh, turn on the power. Off. And now we're going to basically go back through the way that we skipped. Kind of. So right here, you can see this door. That door there with the, uh, the, like, shield on it. You can, and this is possible, you can skip doing an entire section of this level. Like, if you can just... Because what you can do is you can place the canister down in front of that shield. And if you can get out of bounds and get on the other side of that door, you can actually pick up the canister. So that would save having to turn off the power that disables that shield. Um, but I haven't found a way to clip out of bounds in this area to do that. Not for the, not for the part of trying. I have tried, but I couldn't find a way. Yeah, we're basically using these canisters to destroy, um, I don't know what they're called, they're just big things. <laughs> like I said, I haven't watched this run in a year. So here's this big thing that we have to destroy. Wait, what am I doing? Oh yeah, yeah, okay. There's a lot of dudes with guns. You have, uh, like, if you try to carry the canister up there while they're still alive. Oh, this guy trolls me, I think. Hold on. Yeah, great segmented run. 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10 segmented run. I had to kill all the enemies uh, because they would have shot me and I wouldn't have been able to put the canister in. So that's the first canister done. Um, 
And the second canister is the one that you can skip. Also, that thing right there that you just saw with the blue dots coming out of it, that's a save point. Uh, which you can use to save mid-level. Um, but with this level, I don't need that. I will be using it for a later level. Uh, which is Bloodsuckers, the one that I talked about. Which is an escort mission. It's very hard and I used it uh, there. This level isn't so hard as it is just tedious. Like, you can't die on this level. It's just hoping that the enemies don't troll you enough to get in your way. That's a recurring theme with the, with the, the canisters. So yeah, when we destroyed that first one... Oh, yeah. Okay, that's what it is. When you destroy the first, uh, the first chamber there, that disables this shield, I think. I think destroying that first chamber disables this shield, I think. I'm not 100%. Yeah, okay, so now the shield's gone. So basically, if you could put the canister in front of that shield and get out of bounds on the other side and pick it up, you can skip doing the first uh, chamber. Because the game here doesn't count uh, which chambers you've destroyed. Um, it, like, it doesn't count it. It only counts when the last one's been destroyed. So once I destroy this last one, it would end the level whether I destroyed the first one or not. I, I tested this and it works. So whether you if you destroy this one before you destroy the other one, it'll still end the level. Uh yeah, um so when I yeah, uh Jinx, uh, when I recorded this segmented run, uh, I used an emulator. And the PAL version of the emulated version is very glitchy and it likes to crash. So for what for what I could do Make your way on NTSC, I recorded most of this segmented run on NTSC. Um, and I recorded the levels that required PAL to be recorded on PAL. Okay? So this is basically using two versions of the game, but it doesn't make a difference. I had to use PAL for those levels that wouldn't allow the tricks to be done on NTSC. And that was one of them. And that was one of them. So, on the PAL version on the emulator, the graphics UI bugs out and it, it likes to go all pixelated and stuff. Um, so if you see that happening, it's probably because I'm playing on the PAL version at that time. Like, this level right here is done on NTSC. But the level that I just did was done on PAL. That's why the graphics is bugging out. Like I said, if you have an actual PS2 and you play the entire game, it can all be done on PAL. But, like I said, I had to record both... I had to record this segmented run on both versions. I couldn't do the whole thing on PAL or it would crash a lot. So where there was a level that requ required PAL, uh, I, I, I did it on PAL. Well, like I said, you can do everything that I'm doing in this run all on PAL. But I couldn't record the whole thing on PAL. Because it crashed. So I had to record most of the levels on NTSC and then the ones that required the skips on PAL to be recorded on PAL. Okay, so now we have the Bloodsucker. This is the hardest level in the game and I hate it with a passion. I hate it so much. This, this level is what makes me not want to run this game RTA. So, for the first part of this level, uh, it's not that hard. We have to go and get Dr. Grant to escort her. So, I'm basically going to be using this time to, to pick up ammo for my gun. And like I said, this isn't like a proper official segmented run. I made this segmented run to show what this game had to offer. What the skip look, what the run would look like. That's why I made it. 
because I'd done so much for this game up to that point, but I couldn't run it RTA because it's extremely hard, so I just decided to do this. So, right, we need to disable a switch to uh, disable the shield again so we can get through. Uh, no, it's not. I don't. I don't think so. But uh, this game uh, uses individual levels. Like you can select what level you want to play, and um, you basically have all the weapons unlocked. So New Game Plus just allows you to have all the weapons. So since this is recorded on New Game Plus, I could. Like, it was a new game plus one, I could select whatever le level I wanted to. On both versions of the game. That was more troll of the enemies uh, hitting me while I'm trying to do switches. It's a common theme in this one. Um, but like I said, this part is mostly just me trying to get ammo as much as I can. Um, this part, like I said, is not hard because you don't have to deal with any of the enemies. Um, it's when we pick up Dr. Grant that this level gets hard. Um, and you'll see why. Uh, so, compared to Whistler, Dr. Grant has to follow you and, um... She can be really troll of just getting stuck on enemies and she won't move. So here she is, the bitch. Dr. Grant. So I'm gonna pick up a health pack and I'm gonna save. I save because this level is extremely hard, like I said. Uh, and now we uh, do the second part. So we basically have to escort her to the final area she has to shut down like a, a core or a server or something. Now, you could skip this entire level, and this is what bugs me. If you can just clip through one gate, you can skip this entire level. But if you get out of bounds, uh, the level, like the floor that you're standing on, is lower to that platform. So you can't get in there to hit the trigger. It's too high. Well, you can you can save whenever you want to. I have to pick up. Uh, like I kill this guy here to grab some ammo. Like I say, I'm using this to grab uh, a lot of ammo. And then we pick up this health here. So I want to make sure that she is with me. So I want to kill as many enemies as I can. I've tried to do this level with killing as few enemies as possible. Most of the time, she just gets stuck. Uh, that face icon is Dr. Grant, the chick that I'm escorting. I don't know what the icon is though, it's terrible. I think it's her glasses. She's got glasses on her nose, like, you know, what I mean. So here we're going to grab uh, a lot more ammo. Like most of the time, as long as you've killed a, enough enemies, she'll follow you. Um, but sometimes, if one enemy hits her or she gets stuck on one guy, she just can't move, and they'll all crowd around her. And uh... the thing is with this game, though, if you get far enough away from her to where she is, she won't take damage, Help me, Blade. which is ridiculous. Like if I leave her, she should die. But she doesn't. If you get far enough away, she won't take any damage. Look up my health, by the way. Since my health, I've basically got no health at this point. I used the uh, blade ability, which makes me invincible. So right there, I stopped to make sure she was with me. Uh, and there she is. Obviously, you can uh, you can see her. 
I think I didn't see her when I I was looking for her. I went back. I didn't notice that she was standing next to me. Also, I nearly killed her. This is the problem. And this is another nitpick I have with this game. It's when you're escorting an AI. I'm trying to pick up this med pack. I'm really shit at this game. This is why I wanted to re-record this level. Just for that section, it was terrible. Um, but with the, with, the, with the AI when you're escorting them, they stick to you like glue. And, and even when they're not sticking to you, they stand right next to the enemies. So they either stand directly in front of the enemy or right next to them. So when you're trying to attack the enemy, you end up killing the AI you're trying to escort. It's really bad. It's really bad. Really bad. It's terrible. That's why I hate it. I hate the escort missions in this game. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm just... Uh, I save again here. Because I, I, like, I usually wouldn't do that save. But she had really low health and I thought she might die. Now... I, like I said, I tried to re-record some segments. And I re-record, I tried to re-record this level for about four hours yesterday. And I probably got to this end part about 15, 20 times. And every single time she wasn't with me. She didn't follow me. She got stuck. So now she's dead. Thank God for that. Um, and now we just have to kill some enemies. Uh, and then we can, uh, that gate right there. That gate in front of me. If you can clip through that gate, you can skip escorting her. We can just hit the trigger on the other side. And there we go. Level done. And now we are on the final level of the game. Hallelujah. It is called The Core. Destroy them. And this level, casually... Is extremely difficult probably harder than the bloodsucker to be to be quite Mountain honest core. because all you have is the sword it's another level that counts as a boss fight and you only have a sword you can't use anything else so you want to avoid this green gas because it will do a lot of damage to you and for the start of this level we need to destroy these pods uh, and you need to uh, stab them with your sword um, yeah, so when you're inside this water as well, you take a lot of damage, but instead of going all the way around, I can just jump up the up the side. That's a glitch. 10 out of 10 glitch. You can just jump up the side of that. So I need to do this, this part, and then pick up this health up here. And then I can jump down onto this uh, last section. And after I destroy this part is where it would get tricky, because you have to protect Whistler when he's planting explosives. So here comes Whistler. And he needs to plant three explosives and you have to protect him. But I found out that if you come up here and if you fall onto this uh, rock here, so if I drop down here and wait, all the enemies will fall and they'll just try to attack you and they'll ignore Whistler. Right there, I fell off because I'm very smart. But like I said, it doesn't matter because this, this level's basically on a timer. Um, so we can just do it again. But yeah, so when you fall on here, all the enemies will just, you know, crowd around you and they won't attack you. And they'll all come to you and leave Whistler to it. So, for the last level of this game, we're literally just going to stand here and do nothing. 10 out of 10 gameplay. IGN gave this game probably like a 3 out of 10. If you look at the Metacritic scores and all that, it's like it's like a 3 or a 4 out of 10. It's bad. But I've got a lot of nostalgia for this game, so... Yeah, we basically just stand here. And the enemies don't attack you, nor do they attack Whistler. Thrilling gameplay. What I love as well is how he walks all the way to the opposite side, like on the left, to plant the first bomb. And he comes all the way back to the right to plant the second one, then goes into the middle to plant the first, the third one. Why not just do them in an order? 
Explosive device planted. This... One more to go. This game makes no sense. Also, that big massive thing with the big boobies in the middle of that thing. I don't know what that is. Don't have a clue. Couldn't tell you. I, I couldn't tell you what that thing is. That I don't know. It, 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 it could be the it could be Vorpal. Um, it oh no, it's the core, isn't it? Yeah, that that's it. It's the core. That's what it is. It's the core. Also, there is a shotgun in this game. Uh, when you get to these levels where you're set to use a sword, um, Explosive device planted. when you're set to use a sword, it just puts the, shock, the, the shotgun on your back. Even though I never use it throughout the run because it's it's slow. It's not the massive dude from the first movie. Because the massive dude from the first movie is a lot smaller than that. Get your ass right, moved. get ready on time. All day. Get ready on time. Get ready on time. You have to wait for Whistler here to hit this cutscene. And time! And there we go. That was uh, Blade 2. I'll let you watch a little bit of these amazing credits. So like I said, this game is set in between the second and third movie. This game was made by Mucky Foot, um, who, like I said, went, they closed down after this game came out. And yeah. I hope you uh, enjoyed that terrible run that I made, which was really bad, which could be a lot better. Um, it's not a good game, it's terrible.